the gun. And I was shooting it off on the set. You can check this out. And all the crew got nervous because they were <laughs> that was a real bullets. And I was throwing nails up in the air and hitting them and stuff because I'd been shooting since I was a kid. And so they sent the cops around to my room. And, uh, and they said, give us the gun. Because they couldn't take me to jail because too much going on up there and too much money. So I gave them another one that I got that wasn't real. Yeah, <laughs> And so then I'm up there later on, shooting off again, and then the cops came and they got the real one. And the funny part of this was I was on the plane going back at Christmas time to London, and uh, two cops came on the plane and gave me the gun back. <laughs> and I'm going to London, and the PR guy said, you haven't got any guns on you or anything? And I said, no. <laughs> and so we get into London and I handed the gun in. It was a Luger, right? And they said, any bullets in? I said, yeah, two. I had two still left in the magazine. They said, take them out, please. I was doing all this in London. And I gave them the gun, and uh, and that helped me out, too, because the cops uh, were smelling marijuana coming out of my house. Uh, the, the, Bobby, the Bobby walking around the street, yeah, they, they could smell the marijuana. So they sent the drug squad around. And, uh, and to get them off my back, I gave them the ticket for the Luger at the airport. So I paid for that. Oh, we just... <laughs> yeah, story after story. Oh, yeah, they knocked on my door another day. Someone had stole my motorcycle three days ago. I hadn't noticed. It was, it was, parked, it was parked out in the street. And so, uh, and they said, there's a guy, he's in the jail over here. And I said, I better go and look at him. He might be a friend of mine. I, said, I might have Leonard. And I went over and I saw the poor guy. He was, um, yeah, I felt sorry for him. I said, yeah, I'll hand it to him. I said, in that case, we're going to charge you. with that. You get biked up, I have no license and everything. I said, no, I didn't lend it to him. <laughs> so, oh, it was crazy. It was a crazy world. Had, um, I had a five-bedroom place in Eaton Square and uh, had five girls staying with me. You know, homeless kind of girls. Couldn't find a place to live. They all happened to be really pretty. <laughs> and, uh, so I was having a great time, and uh, a friend of mine wanted to throw a party there for one of his friends. So he invited Madame Claude's hookers over. But I was going to go out. I didn't know what the party was about. I was about to go out, and all these roses are pulled up with all these gorgeous-looking hookers in them. And they flew in from Paris. And I said, ain't going nowhere. I'm <laughs> staying here. It's quite funny, because uh, a friend, one of the guys going to the party, his wife was walking across the other side of the road. She came over and joined the party. But she had, and the party couldn't start until we got rid of her. It was like, <laughs> oh, I just remember that uh, those times. It was ridiculous. George, I watched uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service last night at the Astor. Thanks for making the appearance there as well. I was just wondering, did you get to improvise much during the film, either any lines? I'm thinking when you're walking out of the lawyer's office or something with the Playboy centerfold, was that all scripted or...? Yeah, it was scripted. The only line I got is, this never happened, the other fellow. The opening, in the opening scene there, Peter Hunt said, say that line of yours. And I said, what line? That this never happened, the other fellow. So I did, and they left it in. So I didn't need a